All right, everyone, welcome back. We are live. Sorry for that small delay on the beginning of the event. I want to start today with something pretty useful. We'll talk about kind of my favorite uh, candlestick pattern. And that's going to make, I think, a big difference. I've been studying this for the past like four years or so. And this is going to be different than the weekly review we do every Monday usually. And what I did is I put below on the description box of this video the pairs that I'm looking at this week and the zones if you want to read this and see it for yourself after. Because I tend to go through the pairs every week on Mondays, but this time I want to do something different. So you can just watch the, the levels there below in the description and use this for your own notes or whatever you prefer. Okay. If you guys are in me live, just, just let me know in the comment box or in the chat box below. I would appreciate. And I see we have Steve, we have uh, Carlo, Joe, it's awesome. Alejandro, of course, that's perfect. Uh, Saudi Arabia, that, that's cool. Okay, nice. So guys, we're going to start right away. I want to go through that. It's going to be a pretty epic training. And I feel like there's a lot of people out there that talk about candlestick pattern, especially what we talk about today, the engulfing candle. But a few people are able to tell kind of what makes it better, more reliable. What do you need to do to have better, have better success with your pattern? Okay, so we'll talk about that. And I want to show you some example, of course, with some trades. Just trying to find my notes over here so we can go through that seamlessly and everything's going to be fun. All right, cool. Yeah, so here's the thing. A lot of people can tell you like that engulfing candles are good and they might even tra trade them, but they really will tell you kind of what you need to do, right? Or what you need to apply. And they will not tell you how to trade them. And they won't tell you also how to have the best factors, things that are, uh, are going to make it the best. And as always, if you guys have any questions in doing this event, comment below in the chat. We're there to help. And I see we have a bunch of people now. South, South Africa is awesome. Danny, uh, Steve from California. Awesome. Kuz, Kuz, what's up? Yeah, so we'll just we'll just get started right now. And oh, by the way, one last announcement. So I gave myself a challenge recently. The challenge is the, cha the challenge is the following. So I want to do a daily email with daily value. Some of you guys in the email list already got the email. This is going to be called the VIP Trader Growth Email. So every day I send you an email on a specific topic. Just pure value so you can like kind of learn and apply things based on ideas I have, things that I experience or whatever. So if you want to subscribe for this, totally free again. Link below in the description. The first thing I think should be that. And as I said, for the, the pairs, you want to watch the pairs that I'm looking at for this week because we won't do a weekly review like typical. They're going to be in the description box. So everything's going to be written there, I think. If not, just let me know and I'll be able to uh, correct and adapt. Okay, so I want to go through the charts and oh, well, the first thing we'll do is we'll go to this over here. So I want to show you basically when we talk about engulfing candle, engulfing, engulfing pattern. Okay, some people have a question about the definition. We'll spend like a minute and a half on that, not more, because it's quite simple. Okay, so an engulfing candle, this comes from the, the fact that you want to have an engulfing, you want to have a candle engulfing the other one. Okay, so if we were to have a regular candlestick, like over here, this is, let's say a bullish candlestick. Okay. You would have to have a kind of thing that engulfs the candle, which means that in simple language, you want to have it bigger than the other one before. Okay. Now there's a few rules. So some people are going to say, well, this is going to be here. Uh, well, what this is going to be. Okay. So let's just say this is a bearish candlestick. So yeah, we'll go with that bullish candlestick. And then we have another candlestick over here, which is going to go below here. Okay. So a bearish candlestick and my candlestick, you can see that I've never really drawn candlestick that much and I got that at all. So bearish candlestick over here, this is an engulfing candle okay? because it engulfs goals beyond the other one. We're talking the, 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 the body here. Okay. Now this is, this is what you find in textbook and everywhere else online, but I want to show you in this video kind of what you need to do, do or add to make it better. Now, if you were to, let's say trade this. Okay. And I want to restate the fact that you cannot only trade a candlestick pattern by itself, combine it with other things. That's going to be much better. Okay. But let's just see what you trade this. You would have a lot of trades by a lot. We'll just say like whatever, a hundred trades. Okay. Just giving a factor here for the fun of it. Okay. So a hundred trades on that. Now what we want to do is we want to find ways to, because we don't necessarily care about taking a lot of trades. That's fine. If you're a beginner, you want to trade a lot, but then, over time, you want to reduce the amount of trades you take to focus only on the best setup. Okay. If you are able to kind of rank your trades on a scale of one to 10, 
and you always take the, the all the ones from zero to ten or from like one to ten, then you take a lot of bad trades or a lot of trades that are not producing result, and you might want to scale this back to taking less trades. Okay. So my definition of an engulfing candle is first of all, if we were to have a candlestick like this, so a bullish candlestick. Okay, it doesn't matter what what it really looks like. And I'll kind of go through some different steps on that. But the first thing is I want to have a candlestick that's gonna engulf or go beyond the whole body of the previous the whole body plus wick of the previous candlestick. Okay. So what we mean by this is that this here has to be lower than the low of the candlestick before. This is a bearish candlestick, of course. That one over here. And so that's a very first rule, okay? Now, let's say we do this, we compare, and I've done some tests on that in the past. I don't know the numbers by heart, but if we were to compare with 100 trades here, we might have like, probably like around 50 over here, okay? So we reduce by a lot. But those I found would be more reliable. Now, there's no clear answer, clear way of saying like, because of this or that. It's just what I noticed, okay? It's just a fact. And some people could argue that the times during which the candlestick close and whatever don't make any sense or don't make any difference. So by that, we mean that like this here close at a time, right? But who cares what the time is? Who cares how long it's been going? Because we cannot really know how fast the market moves in a time. So basically, this doesn't really matter, but I found this to be more, more reliable, okay? And you will take less trades, but it's more reliable, okay? That's my first basic rule of strong candles, okay? And by that, basically, we mean, like, we want to go from engulfing candle to what we would call a strong engulfing candle, okay? So better than normal, okay? Because if you only take normal, you're like everybody else in the market, and ultimately, my drawing is bad, but ultimately you are going to have better result. Okay. So strong. Here we go. So that, that's the first thing. Now there's other rules we need to put. And I used to be very cautious and care a lot about here, the opposite side of the engulfing candle. So let's say I want to, I want to have this kind stick beyond the high of this one before at the top. I don't care anymore. It, it's not, it, it, I, I tested out more, more in depth and it doesn't make a big difference. So I kind of stop and not think about it too much, okay? Now, the other thing that we need to think about is we need to think about the fact that what happens if we were to have something like this? So let's just say a candle like this, okay? A pretty small candle. That's a bullish candle. And then we have like a, or we'll just even say even smaller than that. So let's say we have a candle looks like this. Okay, and sorry for my, again, candlestick drawing skills. That's not my, my best skill. But so we have this, and then we have an engulfing candle like this. Okay, is that valid? So basically, we just have a small candlestick. Okay. In my mind, that didn't really work too well. Okay, it could work well some time, but that's not something I want to have. I would much have some, I would much rather have something bigger that makes more sense and that we are able to classify as a change in the pace. Like the goal of these kind of things to be a change in the pace of the overall market. So if you have a, uh, if you have a bunch of small candlestick, okay, in the market, and then you have a big candlestick pushing up and that's gonna be about drawing anyway, but that would be the point. Okay, that would be, that would be good. And then, but if you have something small and it keeps being small, then you don't need really change the pace of the market, okay? So just keep this in mind, and this is kind of the thing I look for. Again, if you skip all the small setup that don't mean anything, you might be left with like 40 trades, okay? And that's gonna be what you take. So the point is that, <laughs> that's a really bad video, sorry about that. But the point is that you wanna kind of reduce the number of trades you take to focus only on the good ones, because the bad one, like you could, you could spend hours taking them, but at the end of the month, will they pay your bills? Probably not. Okay, will they be useful? Not at all. And if you have an algo to take them, that's easier. But if you have to take them manually, why not take less trades and focus on, on only the good trades? Okay. So now we've touched on a couple of things. And I want you guys to keep in mind this setup over here because we'll look at it on the chart. And I want to show you some examples. Let me just go and change this thing over here. 
If you have any questions, comment below in the chat. We'll make sure to answer your question during this event, of course. This is also a thing where we collaborate and we can exchange ideas, of course. But I'm gonna shoot some example of trades on that pattern, okay? I'm on TradingView right now. By the way, I've done a few videos on that. I think I have a video coming up on TradingView soon about how to use it and stuff. And that's gonna be pretty useful. But let's just go on the chart. And I wanna show you what that would look like in real life, okay? We had a pretty cool setup over here. And like I said before, the pairs I look at this week on a, are going to be linked below. No, not link, but you will see the pairs I look at with the zones. Like I do usually on the chart, the same review, but it's going to be just written down below to go faster on that. But basically, we'll see if you look below that, especially last week. This week is we're kind of off that zone, but I think I still put it down in the uh, description box. Basically, we were at this resistance area here at 1.60 to 1.65 on Euro AUD. Okay, so if you look at this, price came back to this area a couple of times to reverse. Okay, this area here, this area at the top. Now that means that we can look for, and this is what I mean exactly by combining factors to be able to take trades with the Bong uh with the Engelfin candle. Here we combine, I combine the Bong Juban, the zone, and then the candle, the pattern, okay, which is really a good one. But that's, that's what you want to do. So you look at this, you see price approaching this level. And then that's where I prefer to look on the time frame for trades, okay? And if you are familiar with my channel and what I do, the content I produce, it's always the same principle. There's nothing new, there's nothing like crazy exciting and, and, and different because I trade the same thing all the time. And I, I've proven this to work and I just kind of trade it all the time, okay? So that is it for this. So you go in low time frame. Here I'm on a forward chart. And what you'll see is that price in the past week has been really kind of, well, so recently, like over here, okay, this is like last month, but pushed up to the level, which we talked about, 1.60, which is like around here, to 1.65, okay, that's your level of resistance, of potential resistance, you never know. It could be, could be it, could not be it. So you have to be aware and keep watching, and that's where we add the of the candle. We say price is gonna move here above to the resistance area, and if we have a, a sign reversal, which is the engulfing candle, gets a perfect sign for that. Then we look for a better setup, and then we might even enter a trade. Okay, I look at the bong band with that, of course. But see here how price came to this level, kind of did a big wick, came back down slowly, came back to retest the bong uh band here, at the, 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 high, the upper band, and did this engulfing candle. So again, this concept here was small, we get a push, this is kind of bigger than the candlestick before, okay, overall. Not this one here, but still pretty good, okay? And that means that I would be looking at this as a pretty good setup of what we talked about before. Okay, the bearish of in candle engulfed the previous one, the whole candlestick plus the body, uh, the whole candlestick plus the wick, okay, at the low. And that for me is a perfect trade, sit uh, perfect trade setup, okay? And then what you would do is you would enter it below the low, put your stop loss above the high and that will be your trade okay based on the bigger zone now we could go into that the, the point here is not to show you trades necessarily even though that's a trade i took and i can show you after but that's the principle so i exit myself at one to one reward to risk for half of the trade and the other one at three to one the other half at three to one okay so i didn't calculate but roughly here and so far we're in the trade I'm yeah, I'm pretty sure the first half was closed based on that, what we see here on the chart. But that's it, that's what the trade looks like. And again, like the reason why I'm not really, really caring about the trade and where the trades are at is because I don't look at them. Okay, I haven't looked at the trade at all. I just saw this morning on my platform, especially my robot, that the trade was taken. And then I just showed this to you guys because that's pretty much the, the whole thing here. But that's it for this trade. So Keep in mind that we are combining many factors and that the angle of candle is what I've been seeing the best results with in like four years. And I've been trying a lot of different price action patterns. Most of them, to be honest, don't work at all. And that's why you have to focus on what uh, what works and something I've been seeing works. And it's again really simple. Like you don't need five different things to make it work. A lot of patterns of I think and price action are really, really subjective or like you need to combine a bunch of things and they happen like once in 10 years. And that's not what you want to have. 
these kind of like patterns they appear often like we had one over here against the trend or against the big picture but still still a, a pattern right still useful so we had a bunch of them on this just in this chart we could go back in time and find them but i think that's beyond the video here uh what others i'll take a question guys so and we have one over here also at the same time okay so guys i'll take your question i think I'll, I'll shift that to me speaking over here and we can do a small q a uh, if you have any question about the pairs i've put below and the weekly review i would be able to answer if you want or if you've not signed up again to the emails that i send every day the vip emails is a challenge for me to send a daily email about trading growth and make you become better this this year so the link can be the first link in the description is that to sign up for these emails and I would really love to send you an email every day and kind of help you out to get better over time. Okay. Uh, thank you, Alejandro, for putting the links. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Back in, someone asked, uh, Joe asked, yeah, I'm back in Canada. I'm leaving though on Thursday for Bangkok and then I'll probably do Bali and Australia after. We'll see. Not decided yet, but I I'm leaving for sure. Cannot send a call over here for too long. Kind of at my max, uh, yeah, cold weather endurance. Anyway, uh, someone is asking, Joe was asking, uh, what time frame do you trade this on? So this, these kind of like patterns, this is the thing I like, is that unlike some other patterns, you can pretty much put them on any time frame and they would work. I'm going to test something probably this year that I'm super chilled about because, I, so before I was using, I was trading manually, trading manually. And that means that you can only take the trades you can take. So you have to watch a chart that you can trade. But now that, that now that I'm using more automation and algos, I'm able to trade on any time frame I want. So the question is going to be, can we apply the same principle on the higher time frame, like the deal, the thing I trade on the forward chart and the one hour chart? Can we apply this to the lower time frame? Okay, so the one hour, the the fifteen minute chart, the five minute chart, and see the same result. Because sometimes we have trade on the higher time frame, sometimes we don't. They, they happen in the lower time frame at the same zone. So if we could trade, if you could trade on lower time frame, we might double the, the trades we take. The question is, are they as reliable? And that's what we'll be testing this year. Probably that's a, like a, a growth plan I have for myself this year. Okay. So I'll be looking at that for sure. Super excited about this. So yeah, on lower time frame could be possible. You just have to see if it works, but there's plenty of, there's plenty of, uh, of, of things you can you can look at and that reminds me that the cool thing you can look for at these uh on the low time frame is and just an idea because I don't, I don't trade this but i've seen this work really well in the past okay so here's what you can do you can look on lower time frame well you, you'll first look at run numbers in the market okay so 1.50 on your usd or euro aud i think this pair was at 1.60 round number even 1.57 round number, okay? And actually I might even look, try to show you guys on the chart. That's kind of outside the scope, but let's do it anyway for the fun of it. Uh, here we go. Okay, so let's let's just say we pick one, well, yeah, we'll pick 1.57 on this pair. Okay, so I've identified this year. And then what I'll do is I'll go on lower time frame, like the, whatever, five minute chart, okay, at this level. And what you will see is that price tend, tends to react pretty well at those levels, okay, for some time. It's maybe going to consolidate, maybe going to shift through, and that's where you're going to be able to trade and, and take pretty good setup, okay? And what you could do is you could look for these engulfing candles and the same patterns at these round numbers, okay? I've not tested that. This is just an idea again because I've never traded this on as low of a time frame. But I want to kind of help you out with finding ideas, of course, okay? Now I just need to find back where price was at 1.57 and let's we'll go back a little bit in time right over here. Okay. So see how price comes to this area kind of pulls, pulls back up. And I know we could do this on many areas because like there's a lot of run numbers, but price comes back down here, pushes again, coming back to retest this simple area. Okay. And here consolidates could even trade breakout in that on these run numbers. And I'm pretty sure if we would take a even more run number, like 1.60, the move will be even better. Okay. So you could look for the same principle at these level. So engulfing candles. And we have nothing over here. 
But ideally, like, the first structures will be better than after. Okay. So here we have the single thing candle and we happen to move above. Okay. Just not yet again, because I've never tested that truly. Okay. Angle thing candle here, we move downside. Pretty interesting. You would have a pretty good reward to risk on that. And here we had a, this is not an thing, but here we had another one. No, that's a bad one. Okay, so this is the type of stuff you can do. And you can try to look at the chart, pick the round numbers you think are gonna make more sense, and then look for setup based on these, okay? On the lower time frame. That works really well. On a high time frame, you cannot really do this because of the fact that like the, the round numbers are pretty close to each other. They're not that far. And so you can't really trade between each of them, okay? But on a lower time frame, you could do it for sure. Um, so that that's about it. That's a pretty cool idea, I think. So I'll, I'll leave it if you want to check it out and implement that for yourself or test it out first. Okay. Uh, someone says, please leave this video on YouTube. I'll, I'll definitely leave it. This is there for life and uh, e even beyond, which is what I love about YouTube. But yeah, it's going to be there. Uh, Curtis says, that's what Walter Peter in his book, Naked Forks called Bearish Big Shadow. Yeah. It's similar. It's very similar. It's a very similar concept. I think there might be other rules to the bearish big shadow, which I don't think about. I think one, and I'm not too sure because I've been reading the book a long time ago, but one chaotic pattern, that might be the kangaroo tail that he talks about. You need to have like no kind of chaotic in the past at this end level. And for me, that, don't, that doesn't really make sense. But if you want to look at this, yeah, that, that could be uh, possible as well. Uh, cool. Okay. A really good question from Curtis here. So Curtis says, what if that setup came after a nice strong uptrend? So you have a bearish setup after an uptrend. Uh, would you still take it? I guess that's the question. And basically I will still take it because of the fact that I always trade with the big picture in view, uh, the big picture in mind. So the higher time frame. Okay, and I'll look at the high time frame, the support resistance areas, and I'll be trading based on those. So if we have, it's still really normal for price to go upward to a resistance area, and then we have this this uh, uptrend on the low, on the lower time frame. Now you need to at first you need to push yourself to take the trade anyway, because price is likely to reverse there, and you kind of have to trust that where, that that price will reverse at this level. Okay, if you wait too if you wait too much, it's going to be too late probably, and price could go back down. So I kind of got used to taking trades against the trend and they seem to work well. And actually even some of the best one happen against the trend based on the big picture. And so that that's not an issue for me anymore. Okay. But it, it really used to be an issue at first. Okay. Uh, okay. Very small go fake channel. Yeah. Uh, so like I said, Danny, Danny was saying, he made a mistake to look for too small of a candlestick on the one hour chart as an engulfing candle. Okay, that doesn't really work well. Um, yeah, cool. The goal is to always learn from your mistake. Okay, definitely always getting better. Ayana says, thank you for your emails. I appreciate it. I hope they're useful. And I kind of want to have a different format than most people and kind of share lessons that people don't talk about sometimes. So definitely. Uh, Rudolf says, do you look at the spread in your stop losses? Like AOD CAD will have a higher stop due to a lot of high, a lot higher spread. It's going to have a bigger, uh, bigger spread, of course, but when you swing trade, it doesn't make a big difference. And I always try to put my stop loss beyond the recent high. So a little bit like a few pips above or a few pips below to make sure that it has some room for whatever spread there might be. But it doesn't really play a big difference in your in your uh, swing trades, especially on the uh, I'm not sure what this what the spread is. I need to have a look quickly. Uh, I think we might have. Uh, it's not showing up here, not on trading view, but because it is on a different platform, if we want to have the spread. But yeah, it doesn't make a big difference overall. Okay. Uh, you want to make sure that you don't trade pairs with a very big spread, because those are going to be different. But in general, it's not going to make a big difference. Um, 
please talk about your journey in developing the algorithm you use. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably do a video on that because I feel that's going to be a long thing. Or, uh, yeah, that that's a good point. I can't talk about this now because it's going to take too long, couscous, but I'll do a video on that on my journey with the algorithm and what I've been coming across and how I've been developing it and how I also got a lot of help to develop it for sure. So, yeah, we could do it in the future. I'll, I'll think about it more. Uh, last question, I think I'll go with that. Ayana says, any recommendation for those of us that don't have that don't have a butt or I go to trade? Well, you gotta be super organized. So so half times in your calendar we'll look at the chart, half time we do this and that. And just be consistent for the time you look at the chart. Like if you say you'll look at the chart at 5 p.m., go look at it at 5 p.m. Don't wait till like nine where you forget about it, come back later, and then you miss trades. Because for me the biggest thing was missing trades on the on the chart that I was not looking at or because I was distracted on, on other things. And if you want to trade money, then look at all the chart when you need to look at the chart. Okay, so every time they can close, you look at them. And I used to, I did this for a very long time. Every four hour, I would look at every chart I have on my watch list to make sure I didn't miss anything. And I would understand where price is at. And that's really super important that you do this like all the time. And if you skip a time, then you're likely to miss it up. And you're also likely to miss more times after that. Like you can't just say, well, I'll, I'll, I'll not do it now because I don't feel like it. And then I'll do it again la later. Like that doesn't work because you not, not do it one time means you won't do it the next time probably and that you will kind of cut corners short over time. So consistency here is really the key, right? Consistency in your actions lead to consistency in your And that's the basic thing here. Even for me now with the algo, I need to go back every month to look at all the results and even do my training journal every month, okay? Because otherwise that's not that's not useful at all, okay? I think it might have cut out a little bit, but uh, yeah, I'll just repeat that last sentence. I go back in my journal, I need every month to go back and take note of the trades and do my training journal and make sure everything is fine. If I don't do it, if I say, oh, well, this month is fine, I'll just go back next month. Like the results were good, let's just wait, have fun and go back next month. Well, like next month I'm less likely to do it and less likely to be consistent and know what I, what I need to work on. It's like when you don't plan your week, right? And I know, I'm not going on a different topic now, but kind of like when you don't plan your week. Do, like I really made it, make it a duty to plan our week properly every week, what, I, what I'm gonna work on, what I'm gonna do, who I'm gonna talk to, who I'm gonna reach out to. And if there's a week I don't plan, <laughs> then the week is bad, like the week is really bad. And I get pretty much nothing done or like really not important stuff done. And the same thing goes with whatever you do in trading. Like it's possible to do it. Just make sure that you are able to show up and do the work. Okay. And stay consistent with that for a long time. So that's, that's about the answer, but thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Comment below with your thoughts below this video. If you have any question, any thoughts on that. And as I said, two things. So the emails, I'm going to send them daily. Uh, it's a challenge I have for myself to kind of do it and get you value every single day by email. And we'll keep doing, of course, we'll keep doing the videos and we'll keep doing everything I've, I've, I'm still doing now to give you value. And I appreciate you once again. I'll catch you back here for another video tomorrow. I think it's going to be live tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow we're live and we'll catch you here to talk about, I believe, let me see. Tomorrow we'll talk about, I need to bring this up over here. Uh, today we're talking about the three simple steps to trading. Pretty important. That's going to be epic. So we'll, I'll catch you back here tomorrow, guys. Ciao.